Okay, let's clap for Jackie, everybody. Woo! The pandemic took a lot from me. Took family members, uh, took my job, took my friends, and it took my only outlet from my house, which was school. Uh, out of everybody that lost their job during the pandemic, 7.9% was black Americans and 6.3% was Latinos. And this is just based off of September 2021, recently right now. So the number has drastically been reduced, but the black and Latino communities are still being impacted. As a Latina, I was very impacted. Uh, these, um, the center of like budgeting and all of that <laughs> was the, where I got this information from. I'll, I'll, I'll leave a link on my thing. But losing my job, I was faced with a lot of spare time and I was, I did not have a creative outlet for it. And not only did I not have an outlet, I also had no money to invest in an outlet. So as many other Americans did, I started my own little business um, due to the pandemic. And today uh, I will be showing you guys how I make my charcuterie board orders. And this is kind of just an example of what they look like. Oh, okay. oh did it? Oh, sorry. <laughs> but that's kind of what they look like. Um, but yeah, uh, we'll go over the basics. First, um, we start with cheeses. Secondly, we're onto our meats. And lastly, we have our sweet and our savory, which goes with our crackers. Um, I went ahead and brought everything pre-cut for sake of speed and time. Um, I will put on some clothes. Being the oldest daughter, um, especially in a Hispanic household, my mom does a lot of the cooking. I never have done a lot of the cooking, and I think that's exactly why charcuterie was made exactly for me. Because there is no cooking, and it's actually very easy and to understand the concept. Um, for starters, I would like to introduce uh, my cheeses of choice. Today I have some uh, creamy Toscano that is uh, drenched in a red wine. So the outside of the crust of this little cheese is purple. I'm not sure if you guys can see that. Um, but yeah, it has a little purple tint to it. It's very creamy. Um, I went ahead and sliced it in very little um, slices just so that they fit easier on a little cracker. Um, so yeah, that's my first cheese. Uh, my second cheese is this uh, vanilla uh, blueberry goat chevron. Uh, at first, I was very hesitant on this little purple cheese, but um, because I've never had goat cheese before. But they're like, they're, it's a soft cheese. So this is my soft cheese, and the other cheese is a hard cheese. Um, I normally like to pair both of these because they, they go very well with wine, and half the time these are, these are orders placed for brunches. So I'm always up early getting everything done. Um, I normally always start with crackers, uh, not crackers, the cheese first. Uh, I fan them out in whatever direction I feel looks more pleasing uh, for my customers. And so I just fan out the cheeses. And then I'll add and out the other ones. And essentially, charcuterie is a, it's kind of like an appetizer, but it's meant more to share with other individuals. It pairs very well with red, white wine, or literally any other drink of your preference, or even if you don't drink, you, they're very great for picnics. Um, so my cheese is. Uh, moving on after cheeses, um, I also like to add what are my cream dips that have some sort of cheese in there. 
Uh, I have this one, which is my spinach and artichoke with Parmesan. And I kind of just put that right there. And then I have this other one that is a salmon one with everything but the bagel seasoning. Sounds weird, but it's actually very good. And then I have, lastly, I have my favorite one. The name of this brand is actually a cuss word, so I'm not gonna say that for you guys. But it is keto friendly and it is basically a chipotle dipping sauce. Um, so there we go. So moving on to meat. Uh, I normally just use salami. So I brought some salami today. Uh, depending on my customers, I normally ask them if they have allergies or anything that they want me to work with or if they have a specific meat preference or um, cheese preference, I let them know that you know I can totally accommodate to whatever they want. Uh, uh, to, for salami, I kind of just fold it in little fours. Right now I folded three pieces I don't, in the matter of me talking. Uh, I kind of just fold them up as I'm going and I, you know, I just arrange them in however way they fit the best. So I kind of just fold these up right there. And, or like you can just simply lay them around just so that they're more easy for your friends and family to get. For the sweet part, I always like to add some berries. Oh my God, I can't wait. I have strawberries, raspberries, and blueberries. These are very easy to display because you just scatter them around and they kind of just fill in the spaces. Uh, and I kind of just arrange them by color, by cheese, or whatever looks prettiest to the eye. And lastly, you add the crackers and your other sweets. So normally I go to Trader Joe's and these are my favorite ones. They're rosemary crisp crackers. Um, you know, and I kind of just, I'll take a little handful and I'll scatter them around in the remaining gap. just so that my customer has stuff to eat with the little crackers and the berries. And yeah. And after that, I will simply just close it on up. And that's kind of what the order looks like. Uh, every day, I pack at least four to five of these. They take me a lot more than eight minutes to make. Um, but it is my new passion, it is what I like to do on my spare time, and it is what changed my life. Um, in a time when I didn't know what was certain and what was not, um, I found a comfort space in cheeses, and not only that, um, it helped me become my own boss and be able to go to school full time and still have an income. Thank you so much. Okay, Julian, start us up. Oh, sorry, Jessica had a... Can we see how it looks like? Yes, I'll walk it around, or like, I'll kind of just let you guys see how it kind of looks like. Yeah. Do you have like the social media for me? I do, I do have that, and I can plug that for you guys, but, uh, or like I'll let you guys know what it looks like. calling them shark coochie boards and I could not stop laughing about it so I looked it up and I was like what is that and I was like so like adult lunchables like just crackers cheese and some meat and I just I just started doing more research and like now like if you go to my house at any given time I have at least like seven types of cheese <laughs> so yeah that's just kind of how it happened Ooh, <laughs> back. okay Julian yeah, I think I thought your introduction was good. Um, all right, I think I missed uh, in your introduction what you were going to do. Uh, that's the one thing that I kind of caught. I caught a few uh, filler words, uh, just like the thumbs, things like that. Um, however, I really like the fact that through the entire process, you kept eye contact and you continue to speak um, to us as you were kind of prep prepping your uh, uh, your 
flattered as well. That, I mean, I thought that was that was great. I don't think I could do both of those speak and try. To, I'm, I'm horrible in the kitchen, so I don't think I can fold, you know, cheese and speak at the same time. I have to do one or the other. So that was that was really good. Um, I think that the only time that I heard you pause for a little bit was during your transition from the cheese to the crackers. Uh, other than that, I mean, it was only like two seconds, so you really took up the uh, entire time for your uh, for your speech to give a. Uh, just give us references on your on your topic. Oh, it's my turn. Okay, I'll switch on. Okay. Uh, you had great volume. I think your volume and the way your cadence, the tone, and all that was just greatly illustrated in the way you spoke. It's similar to what he said. I would say the only critique for you is literally just getting rid of your fillers. Once you get rid of those ums, I can already tell your speeches are going to sound like awesome. You already have the confidence, you already have that voice, and you're already speaking with command. Now it's just removing that element, you'll be solid. Thank you. Yes, good, good critiques from uh, both of you. And I thought the topic was a great topic. Sorry, I'm trying to pull this up here. The topic was a great topic. I was literally just talking about uh, Thanksgiving charcuterie board. My sister-in-law is a genius at a charcuterie board. So um, actually, this is that's exactly when I started. I started as a joke, and I said, I asked my friends, like, hey, if I made little boxes for like 10, 15 bucks, would y'all take them? And they were like, yeah. And it just took off. But yes. Uh, so, but your volume is great. You're very exuberant, which is which is a good way of saying you know energetic. And I just need you to harness that energy. I need you to put some reins on it because you're constantly moving around, and you want to avoid that. Especially if you have gloves on, you you just make um, it's like you're you're unwrapping presents constantly um, when you're doing that. Your eye contact was generally good. It was easy to hear you. Tone of voice was great. It was easy to understand you. So you have a lot of positive things. It's just you need to, I think, refine it uh, a little bit more. The the ums and the uhs are problematic. So your job, Jackie, is you're going to watch the video when I post it. I want you to count every single one. I want you to report that in your self evaluation. And everybody, you should all be doing that because that's a that's a thing. <laughs> You want to get rid of there's there's nothing that communicates either I'm unprepared which you weren't or I'm nervous which I think you were and next time everybody I, I want to see all of your eyes right now I want you warming up your voice you get rid of ums and uhs by practicing before you speech and practicing the speech the day before have somebody watch you and every time you say an um make them have their hand go up in the air. You will not be able to continue. So I think if you slow down, take a deep breath before you start, that'll help you calm your nerves a little bit. And you know, and I know that everybody's just starting out and I'm dumping a lot of stuff on you, but that's why we do this kind of you know, intensive um, practice. So thank you very much, Jackie. It was very interesting. Jessica? Um, Jackie, what's your favorite cheese? My favorite cheese? Uh, it's 